Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 10th of March and a few updates this week. As always, I have the list of updates so you can jump to any particular one that tickles your fancy. For new videos, I created a video all about what is ChatGPT. Obviously, huge amount of buzz around it right now and I don't actually talk very much about ChatGPT. I talk more about what it's built on. So artificial intelligence, machine learning and neural networks and how they function, how they learn, how we actually get them to model, predict, classify future data. And then at the end, what is cheap GPT and what's special about chat GPT compared to GPT. So it's a big video, it's about 90 minutes long, but you'll learn about machine learning and neural networks along the way. And then just a quick video on the Azure Virtual Machine modifiers, the value adds, the little letters you see after the VM SKU like D, S, etc. So I go through those and stress why for the newer VMs, you should always use the S variant. So on to what's new. For virtual machines and virtual machine scale sets, we now have the App Insights extension. So App Insights gives us that intelligence into our applications. Now, historically, we think of App Insights with um, app services, with functions, with maybe AKS, and it has an auto instrumentation mode. It used to be called Codeless Attach, i.e. I don't have to modify my code to include a certain SDK to get this information. Instead, at runtime, this agent just hooks into .NET or J2E for Java Enterprise Edition applications. Well, for this, now there's an extension for VMs and virtual machine scale sets that's going to let it go and with that auto instrumentation, i.e. an agent without having to change my code, it's going to hook into .NET. This could be .NET Framework or .NET Core applications built on IIS and will then bring that information into my App Insights workspace so I can then get those detailed application level logs, those metrics, those traces to give me insight into my custom application. I can enable this through the portal or through a PowerShell script. AKS Container Insights, remember Insights is all about that curated set of gathering of information to a log analytics workspace and then insights based on that intelligence. Well, now for the container insights with the Azure Kubernetes service, it can also now collect from syslog. So with that, I'll now be able to go and get that additional data. I can tweak it through modifying the data collection rule that gets created to gather that data. Realize it is additional data, so there will be certain ingestion impacts for my log analytics workspace, so consider the charges associated with that but now I can get that better insight into things that are written into the syslog. And then virtual machine scale set flex, remember flexible orchestration mode compared to the, the standard orchestration mode with the uniform that we had previously. Uniform, hey, I have one template, and everything is created from that template. With flexible orchestration, and I've got a separate video on this, I can just add VMs into the flexible orchestration. They can be different SKUs, they can even be spot and non-spot, but it does still have the concept of a VM profile. And the VM profile acts a bit like the old uniform orchestration where if I wanna create new VMs, it will create them based on that profile. So what this lets me do is when I want to scale up, I can actually now tell it a base number, they'll just use regular standard VMs. Beyond that base numbers, it scales up. I can say, hey, a certain percentage of these use spot. Remember, spot is cheaper because it's either excess capacity, but there's a chance you could get evicted. I can go and look at the historic eviction rates to see what's the chances of that eviction. But I can say, hey, 50% when you scale beyond this base number, use spot. So it's gonna help me be more cost optimized for my virtual machine scale sets. So that is now in GA. On the storage side, so for standard SSDs, they've now introduced a billing cap on the transactions. This is not a change to performance. Nothing is changing about, hey, how many IOPS I can get with my standard SSD. What they're now doing is capping the transactions they're gonna bill you for. So what this will mean is, 
if I do a fairly high amount of IOPS with my standard SSDs, I'm gonna pay less, because it's now gonna cap the amount of transactions I'll pay for. Again, it's not changing, it's not limiting the performance I get out of it, it's just saying, hey, um, we're gonna stop billing you once you hit this transaction cap. What that may mean is if historically you've used standard hard disk drives, well, you we may wanna now go and look because maybe with this transaction cap, standard SSD becomes a more appropriate um, cost optimized option for you. Microsoft Purview now has a data sharing lineage. So one of the things Microsoft Purview does is really cool is an in-place data sharing. So for Blob and Data Lake, I can have the ability to share information from my storage accounts with other entities, and I have full control over that, but it's all in place, it's not copying the data. What this lineage adds, let's go and take a look at this quickly, is for my data officers in my organization, I can now very easily get a graphical visual view of, hey, what is happening here? So I'll be able to see the data sources that are being shared with me, that my organization is taking advantage of from other people, but also what I'm sharing with other companies. So all of this is in preview. I think the in-place sharing is in preview. This lineage is in preview, but it now gives me that better ability to go and see exactly what is going on. And then for China North 3, Ultradisk is now GA. Remember, Ultradisk is that lowest latency. I can individually tweak the IOPS and the throughput dynamically while it's being used, separate from the capacity. And then this is actually a pretty big one. So Azure vaulted backup for blob and files. Historically, Azure backup could provide backups for blob and files, but it was really just an orchestrator. What it was doing was creating in-place snapshots of my blob and files in the storage account. It was just controlling the creation of the snapshots. What I can now do instead is actually copy the data into my recovery services vault. So this is now potentially offsite. It's an alternate location from that in-place data. It's completely isolated. I could have long-term retention. I can also then use features such as multi-user authorization. If someone got to the initial storage account, well, they wouldn't have permission to go and delete, for example, the backup. So I now have in preview the ability to not just orchestrate snapshots in place, but actually copy the data to my recovery services vault if that's functionality I want. I want that separation of them. On the database side, so for PostgreSQL Flexible, PG Bouncer, there are some metrics available. Remember, the whole point of PG Bouncer is it's a connection pool. PostgreSQL Flexible accepts a certain number of connections. Well, rather than me having clients connect directly to the Postgres database, they connect to the connection broker. It then takes care of handling the actual connections to the database. And with the metrics, I can now see the number of, for example, active client connections. I can see the number of waiting client connections because, hey, there isn't a connection available. I can see the active server connections actually to the server, number of idle server connections, but also total number of pool connections, number of connection pools. So I get a better insight into what that PG Bouncer is actually doing. And in miscellaneous, managed Prometheus, I can now integrate with PromQL, the way I actually can run integrations and queries against that Prometheus data from Azure Workbooks. So if I have that Azure managed Prometheus, I can now just run out of the box Prometheus Explorer Workbook to run queries directly against it and get data. And that's it. So as always, I hope the update was useful. Until the next video, take care.